Hello, this story is about a boy called Jason, who one day had an argument about whether real magic does or doesn't exist. Jason told his friend Barry that it was just all tricks, but none of it was real magic. But Barry disagreed completely. Jason said, You really expect me to believe that there are magicians that can really disappear and really fly from one city to the next by just flying like Superman? Barry said, I don't know what type of magic magicians can do, but I just know that real magic exists. Jason said, okay, so if you're so convinced real magic exists, why don't you just show me a real magician? Anyone. Barry said, actually I do, I can let you meet a real magician, just don't let him know you don't believe in real magic, don't ask why, just trust me, he doesn't take kindly to skeptics, especially when they're skeptical of him. Two days later they arrived at this fast food restaurant and Barry was introduced to the chef who was called the magical chef by his friend. The magical chef said, well hi there, I don't usually talk about magic to people I don't know but your friend there Barry is a great friend of mine and any friend of Barry is a friend of mine. Jason smiled and said, well, I don't really believe in magic, but Barry coughed as if to remind Jason not to let the magical chef know Jason doesn't believe in real magic. The chef said, I'll get your usual Barry and I'll get your friend my speciality Four Seasons Pizza. The chef was making the pizza with his blood boiling knowing Jason didn't believe in real magic. He told himself he would teach him a lesson that magic was real. When the pizza arrived Jason ate it like it was the first meal he had in a week. When he walked home that evening alone it got really sunny like a scorching hot summer's day which was strange because just minutes ago it was a nice spring day but kind of cold. It suddenly got very warm and the sun started shining like a really hot summer's day. Then a few minutes later he was passing trees and all the leaves were falling off them with the wind as if it just turned to autumn. Then suddenly it started snowing like it was the middle of the winter, he was freaked out thinking of the name of the pizza, Four Seasons, and wondered was that the chef's magic? He rang his friend and his friend told him, I'm not going to explain nothing more to you except that the chef is a true magician like I said, because magic is real, I told you this all along. You just need to believe and I told you if he knows you don't believe his magic is real, if he is in a bad mood he is liable to do anything. I've heard stories. A few days later Jason went into a restaurant in his town. He got a flyer from a person on the street with a voucher for a free dessert with the meal. After his meal he realized the free dessert was a delicious ice cream, he enjoyed every bite of it. The waitress said to Jason, you sure enjoyed that I can see. Jason froze when he realized it was the magical chef and the dessert was called death by chocolate. He wondered did the chef poison the ice cream. Thankfully he felt fine. Jason was walking home when suddenly an ice cream truck ran him over and killed him. Patty was exhausted from a long list of job interviews she had to conduct today. She sat down relaxing, watching TV with a cup of coffee. She wondered was it a mistake having a cup of coffee, as it would more than likely keep her awake 
all night. She needed something to calm her nerves anyway, as her day was hectic, so she decided to enjoy her cup. Suddenly her cell phone rang. It was a private number, which she usually never answered, but something told her to answer the phone. When she did, she heard a familiar voice. Hello, Patty, a woman said. Patty said, hello, who is this? The woman said, Patty, this is going to come as a shock to you, but you are in grave danger. Please don't say anything for a minute. I am your future self. You are in grave danger because I am speaking to you from the other side. I can't show you myself because if you see yourself dead, it will affect a lot of different things. You need to look in your attic right now. There is a ladder in the hall that you were using to paint the hall. Now what I need you to do to stay safe is climb that ladder, look to see is there a device like a bomb in your attic, and trust me, it will be there. It should be detonated in five minutes, but I'll tell you how to safely dispose of the bomb. Don't worry, don't try to get out of your house, because the house is rigged. If you try to leave by window or door, it will activate the bomb. Please don't waste any more time do it now. Patty was in shock when the person hung up. She wondered. Well, she knew. It had to be some sort of prank. How could her future self be talking to her? But just in case there was something to it, because she did have an open mind, she got the ladder and put it under her attic. She climbed the ladder and put on the light and took a look around. She got a shock when she saw in front of her the person she refused an impersonation job for, a new show on the local TV channel. The person put a rope around her neck and said, You bitch, you should have given me that job. Then as the rope was around Patty's neck, she was pushed down. She then hung from the rope while the woman placed a typed suicide note on the ground next to her body. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Jack and Linda were devastated one night in 2015, when their beloved dog Hulk had gone missing one day during the summer. They both hoped for a week on end that the dog would turn up, and even though it was chipped, they didn't seem to be able to track it. Jack put it down to criminals stealing the dog and removing the chip. Linda didn't want to buy another pet, as she said it would just cause too much emotion with her and her loving memories of Hulk. In 2020, Linda was sitting out in the garden, enjoying the sunshine, when she heard something move in the garden. She was surprised, so turned around. To her surprise, she saw a dog, with an uncanny resemblance to Hulk. It had been five years since she wondered how could the dog have came back after all this time. She couldn't help herself, so she called the dog in a friendly tone. Here, Hulk. Suddenly the dog barked very aggressively. Linda was surprised. She thought of something, but wouldn't find the bravery to check with the dog being so aggressive. But still she saw it. The brown patch under Hulk's neck proved to Linda it was really Hulk. She was so happy that he had returned, but wondered what made him so angry. She couldn't believe her eyes, 
After five years, Hulk had finally came home. She was going to call her husband, but had decided to surprise him when he came home. That evening when Jack had come home and saw what Linda's surprise was, he seemed to have gone pale. Linda wondered what was wrong, as she was certain Jack would be delighted to see Hulk return. Suddenly Hulk jumped right up and mauled Jack until his body was lying on the ground lifeless. That night she had a call from her friend Mike. She listened in shock to what Mike had to say. Linda, I can't understand what is happening and I'm sure there is an explanation, but I was the only one Jack had told. Five years ago, Jack accidentally ran over Hulk in the driveway and killed him. I helped him bury Hulk. Linda, I don't know how this is possible, but before I called you, I went to where we buried him. The dog's bones and everything are gone. There is nothing there. Linda heard a noise behind her, and Hulk was standing right next to her, and started barking, then jumped right farther. Sam was relaxing watching TV when he got a phone call from his girlfriend Ginny. She said in an excited voice, Hi Sam, it's me. I just finished an absolutely amazing game. Well, I'm not sure could you even call it a game. It's more of a surprise or an amazing prize or something like that. I have the choice to nominate someone close to me to experience the same thing. Trust me, you love it. They gave me the rules. All you need to do is go down to the bus stop across the street and under the seat, under a stone, will be an envelope with instructions to you go to a place called the Red Room. But I know it's kind of weird at the start. You get taken in a cab and are blindfolded, so you don't know where you are going exactly. I have to admit, I was totally freaked out at that stage, but when I got to the red room, Sam interrupted Jenny. Jenny, are you high or something? What is going on? What is the red room? Okay, in the envelope you will see a questionnaire. You just fill it out and then follow the instructions to get brought to this room, which is called the red room. It's kind of strange though, because the room is all white. There is no red in it. But I was asked about what was my favourite food, movies, books, etc. And the room was full of everything I love. And there are loads of shopping trolleys outside the room to me carry it. Trust me, you will absolutely love it. I'll show you what I have when I get home. Sam said, you're telling me that I can go there right now to the bus stop and fill the questionnaire. Ginny said, yes, right now, because you don't know what time you're going to be collected. Sam said, okay babe, I'm on it right now. I'll see you after this freaking weird surprise you're talking about. A few minutes later, Sam walked to the bus stop and sure enough, there was a stone with an envelope underneath. He knew he couldn't fill out the questionnaire at the bus stop, as he needed something to lean on, and he had no pin, so he brought it back to his house and filled it out. He was asked to go to a quiet road near his house and get picked up outside a gate in an hour. He was there waiting and a car pulled up, and a person with a face covered said, Welcome to the Red Room, where your dreams become a reality. You don't have to pay one cent for loads of things you could only dream to afford to buy. There will be lots of more surprises waiting for you in the Red Room. Sam was shown into the car and blindfolded, and a half hour later his blindfold was taken off in a white room. The white room was full of everything he loved. Games consoles, expensive TVs and lots more. He then heard a voice come out of a speaker that said, 
Hello, and welcome to the Red Room. Thanks very much for accepting the offer to enter the Red Room. Everything you see was chosen from the answers to your questionnaire, so we surmise you are very happy with your gifts. You now have the honour to ring a friend and nominate them to enter the Red Room. Just simply tell us their location and we will give you a meeting point to then pick up their envelope. Sam said happily, I nominate my cousin Fred please, he lives just around the corner from me. The voice spoke again. Perfect. All you need to do is call your friend using your cell phone and let him know about the game and tell him to look under the same place as you did by your bus stop. Sam was very happy to make the call and when he hung up he heard something from the wall. He wondered what it was. Then suddenly he heard gunshots and he was shot to bits. His blood splattered all over the white room and he wasn't alive to find out why the white room was called the Red Room. Thanks for watching the Assassin Rapper and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. I had a very tragic event happen in my home years and years ago. I was left a mansion in an estate in the middle of the country, and trust me, it was a very beautiful, mystical place you could see the history written all over it. But one day I had a falling out with a man. That man was my uncle. He was left money, but that's it. But you see, he wanted to claim some of the land around the mansion, and no matter how many times I told him that none of the land was his, he wasn't having it. One night I eventually called a truce, but in reality I had planned on murdering him, which I did. I poisoned his wine and hid him down in the wine cellar. I tied him up to the wall with shackles to make the most of the space and built bricks around him to suit the rest of the wall. I tried to do it perfectly, whereas people would think it was just a part of the wall. For years and years I felt an eerie atmosphere in the house and I just put it down to my nerves over what I did. Thankfully he didn't seem to haunt the place like you'd see in some spooky houses where paintings would float along the air etc. One night I brought a beautiful lady I met down in the village home for dinner. We were enjoying the dinner but she didn't really like the wine I chose. I asked her to choose one below in the cellar, proud of my collection of wines over the years. I must have collected hundreds of bottles of wine. The girl went down to the cellar and was in awe with all the different wines I had on display. I was standing back wondering what she would choose. Suddenly I noticed something strange. When she handed me a bottle that stood the hairs on the back of my neck, it was the same brand of wine I used to poison my uncle. It wasn't the same bottle of course, but the exact same brand. She gave me a smile and there was something in her eyes. Had she known that my uncle had been poisoned by me using this brand? Was she just playing a sick game with me before calling the police? Was she the police? All different questions swam around in my head until I realized something was moving. It didn't make a sound, but it was definitely moving. I panicked, but couldn't let her notice the fear. She'd turn around if she noticed. 
I had fear over what was happening before me, behind her. What I was seeing with my own eyes, but what I could not make any sense of. What I saw was a brick move, and my uncle's huge eye stared out at me. I remember he had lost an eye in the war, but I hadn't seen that eye for years, not since the day I killed him. I told the girl we should go up to finish her meal, it will be getting cold. She gave me a quisitive look, as she knew we had practically finished our dinner already. Suddenly she turned around and screamed when she saw my uncle's eyes staring right at her from the wall. I didn't know what was happening. How could my uncle be alive? I had to stop her screaming. I had to stop her screaming. It kept getting louder and louder, so I grabbed the bottle and smashed it over her head. As she fell to the ground, my uncle burst through the wall and looked at me sadistically and said, that girl could have chosen any bottle out of your huge collection, but will I tell you why she chose that one? Because I summoned her, here to take her soul, to bring me back to life.